Cool. So the topic is evaluation of LLM apps. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Sharanya. I work as a lead developer at ThoughtWorks. I've been working on a few genai based POCs, uh, building apps, uh, uh, mostly like responding to uh, um, user queries, using LLM automated responses, and also building RAG-based systems, like have a set of documents which can be indexed. And uh, based on that, you generate queries to user inputs, or you, you generate answers to user inputs. So, so let me just uh, start off with uh, some introduction about uh, what does it involve to create LLM apps. Uh, just, to, just to understand the landscape, uh, how many of us have already worked in LLM-based applications so that I can see how much I should deep dive? OK, three or four people here, and maybe uh, Yeah, maybe a few people in the, the remote. Cool. So let me just wade through uh, the the typical uh, landscape of building an LLM application. So what happens typically is you identify a problem which can be addressed using uh, uh, like solution using LLM. So then uh, this this problem. In order to solve this problem, there are a whole variety of models out there. So you pick and choose a model which would be uh, helpful um, and then you try to customize uh, this whole solution uh, so there are various techniques like prompt engineering rag based implementations and stuff like that so you choose the application um, architecture also based on it and finally you put the application in production and then how do you know how things are working fine right so you have to uh, run some evaluations also collect feedback to ensure that things are working as expected So moving on, uh, typically uh, when you delve inside the realm of uh, LLM applications, you have users typically asking questions uh, to the to the application, and then the developer basically builds some prompts which are fed as inputs to the language model, and uh, sometimes these language models also work out of data sources. Like these language models, as you know, they are like. Uh, uh, they, they could be a public model, which is like trained by Google or any other platform out there, where, where it is trained on a common corpus of data, uh, which, is, which is not like specific to the domain that you are using, like uh, the, the application domain or something specific to your client or your organization, it might not be specific to it. So in order to ground the LLM to more specific use cases, we might use some data sources and uh, ultimately, all of these inputs are fed in one form or fashion to the LLM, and we get a response. So this is the this is largely the general working of an LLM. So uh, we also covered RAG, um, retrieval augmented generation, in the last uh, uh, episode. So in which, uh, so typically we consider uh, uh, grounding the LLM, right? So RAG is an application. Uh, or RAG is an implementation to ground the LLMs. So we have documents, which are pretty much unstructured data. And those documents are basically broken into smaller chunks. So we have uh, algorithms which can do that. And uh, it is fed to uh, an embedding mo model, uh, like Gecko or, uh, or a few similar models which are, which are out there, which can, which can convert the chunks into embeddings. Embeddings are nothing but vector-based representation so text to vector, right? It converts and it stores in an embedding store or it's also called as a vector store. So ultimately, when a user asks the query, what do we do? We break down the query also into embeddings because our original source data is broken into embeddings and stored. So the user input is also broken into embeddings. And using these embeddings, we have we do a search on this vector database and we retrieve the relevant chunks for the user's question what are more relevant pieces of those embeddings but but the output of the vector store is not in the form of embeddings it is it is in the form of text so it it understands the embedding and it returns text and that text input is fed as input to llm so basically uh, not just the user input but some of the relevant documents or chunks of the document that are relevant to the user query is additionally fed to the LLM. And the LLM is now 
this is what we call as grounding i i give the, i give some question i give some relevant uh, documents or pieces of documents and then i expect the llm to go through it and produce some summarization or uh, text generation or question answering based outputs so this is what typically happens in a rag system okay so cool uh, moving forward what are the challenges in building an uh, a simple prompt based applications or even rag based applications or even more complex multi agent systems right so in prompt based applications uh, this is like the simplest format of building uh, uh, building an llm based solution so in which you just feed prompts and based on its common corpus or training data it it returns output and that feels sufficient for us so that is the most simplest format in that also we have to go through uh, something called prompt effectiveness right like whether the input so so prompt engineering is again a very big um, a uh, section in which there are different ways of prompting uh, there is uh, there is zero shot prompting there is few shot prompting there is chain of thought prompting so there are different prompting techniques and how do we know which of these really works for example if i if i have a very simple use case for example my documents are not like hundreds i have only a couple of documents right or or i just want to steer this uh, uh, llm to function like uh, something like as if it is like a uh, like a question answering bot rather than like a teacher or anything right like i, I just want to give it so, some personality and and uh, make it make it work some uh, in in a way that is that is specific for me but i don't want to give like hundreds of uh, documents as inputs so in in that sense we don't go to rag we just stick to prompt based implementations but then we give small examples called few shot prompting right we give simpler examples to say if this kind of input comes then you have to react like this if this kind of input comes you have to react like this so we leave the llm at that then the next real user input gives uh, user gives an input then it follows those uh, examples and tries to come up with answers so in that we typically evaluate how effective the prompt is the methodology of prompting as well as uh, as such the language model that we have chosen for example there is vertex ai there is chat gpt uh there are uh, there are a few more models out there right so which model is appropriate for the use case that we have chosen so measuring that is also an important aspect when it comes to rag implementations uh, as we had just seen uh we are we are breaking the input document into some chunks and we are expecting that for the user input is it retrieving the relevant chunks right so the relevancy the retrieval effectiveness is it retrieving the right chunks if i ask a question about uh, um if i ask a question about user sign up is it uh, is it responding with user sign up or is it uh, uh, is it responding with something like communities or something that is not at all relevant to that right so of the whole landscape of input uh, uh, chunks is it re is it retrieving the uh, the thing things that are uh, relevant to us so so context relevancy to the input as well as whether the retrieval uh, is effective or not so that is uh, that is one of the challenge when it comes to multi agent systems so so to give an introduction to multi agent systems it is like a combination of multiple llm based applications those some of them could be simple prompt based applications the rest of them could be more complex rag based applications and the complexity lies in the output of one llm app is fed to another llm app and again the output is fed to another llm app and so on and so forth so there are multiple llm llms involved so there are multiple agents so one's output and effectiveness affects the other one's output and effectiveness so model interactions uh, play an important role and again so so each of these are if you noticed each of these are increasing in complexity uh, like uh, like prompt based systems whatever we have to take care of the same effectiveness of prompt etc has to be take care, taken care of in the rag implementation as well as these contexts and uh, the effectiveness of the retrieval etc all of this come in in uh, in a multitude of complexity in the multi agent system also so it is like one on top of the other increasing complexity so effectively what do we need to measure accuracy of the llm response and also relevancy of the 
retrieved context. So I will stick to somewhere in between, like the RAG implementation, in which you have to measure the accuracy of the final output. You also have to measure the accuracy of the uh, context, which, which is like uh, one step before the final output. So this is like a more closer look at the RAG implementations. So let's say there is an end user here. Uh, the end user sends some query. Um, so this is like just the UI through which the user can send the feedback, sorry, send the, send the input. So now the, the query input is sent to the embedding model. And this embedding model breaks the query into vectors or embeddings, and it fetches the relevant snippets from the database, right? So the assumption here is in this vector database, we already have other chunks which are stored, right? So now coming coming to this four, number four is like the content uh, output or what I call a, called as context in the previous slides, right? The retrieval context or the content snippets that are, uh, that are relevant that are being retrieved from the vector database. So now coming to the complexity of prompt management, uh, how you build a prompt is, is twofold. One is, the user input is, is embedded into the prompt. Also, the context that we are retrieving from the vector database, that is also uh, embedded in the prompt. So the prompt contains, user is asking these, these, these queries, and these are some relevant chunks or, uh, or uh, relevant snippets of data. Based on this, you give me an appropriate response. So that will be typically the structure of a prompt. And if, it, if we follow COT, which is chain of thought prompting, then we would probably give it more examples to it. Apart from these two aspects of user query and the, con and the context snippets, we provide much more examples also. So now all of this uh, uh, synthesized prompt or an optimized prompt is now sent to the LLM for processing. So then the LLM processes it and finally provides the output. So in the context of evaluation, we are now interested specifically in point number four, point number six, as well as point number seven. Right? Any questions so far? Or any thoughts you want to share? Uh, Please? Hi, Sharanya. Uh, thanks for taking your time and explaining. Uh, I would like to understand uh, the, very first, uh, the very first question that you had. I mean, you, you mean uh, you explained it here. So when you suggested that we have to choose a, uh, the right model, by example, by saying the, the vertex A or open AI, um, just like to understand on your thoughts, like uh, in on which on which criteria should I go for open AI or which criteria should uh, uh, opt for Claude or any other uh, any other models? Like any suggestions on that note? True. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. I can, I can share some thoughts around that. So, um, if if your use case is more uh, more generically grounded, uh, for example, uh, um, I, I want to I want to give a few samples, um, and then I want to generate some outputs. For example, I I had developed an application which was uh, uh, which was using uh, uh, something like uh, based on a few uh, CI/CD prompts, you generate or you build prompts for newer use cases. For example, you build a CI-CD um, YAML for, uh, uh, let's say, one tool, like, uh, like let's say, or, or one language like Java. Then you, you give that as an example, and then based on it, you want to build uh, another output. Let's say for Golang, how would the how would the uh, YAML look like? Like how will you package? How will you upload it? How will you deploy it? Right. So if you give certain uh, proper inputs or proper prompts, and then you want to get outputs like this, a simple uh, thing like uh, ChatGPT three point five or or uh, now now there are there are more uh, recent uh, versions, but still we used uh, GPT three point five Turbo, and it worked fine for us. So. I would say for simple use cases, uh, something that is out there with uh, with less hurdles and for people to try out, it depends depends if you have like an API key, how much you're able to spend and stuff like that. But in case of uh, more complex, for example, um, um, image-based classifications or image-based uh, um, like multimodal use cases, right? Um, Google provides something called Vertex AI, uh, of which you have uh, a model called Gemini. So we use uh, Gemini 1.5 Pro for some of our uh, text extraction use cases. Um, likewise, uh, uh, that is Gecko for uh, for creating embeddings. Likewise, so so each model comes with its own uh, explanation of what it is uh, more suited for. Um, 
but i guess uh, you have to try it out and okay how to how to know that whether something works or not for your use cases of course looking at the output you would know uh, as a person who is developing it but to be more concrete and to know uh, to know like across cycles like as you improve the prompts if things are working fine or when you change two models is there some difference or not is it is it going towards a improving trend or is it deteriorating right in order to know that we have these metrics so you can have this metrics like an like an observability platform you can build these metrics and then you can keep changing these parameters of prompting techniques or you can keep changing the type of models you use and you can based on the metrics that uh, that come out of it you can you can have a sense of whether it is working well or not okay okay thank you so much makes sense cool uh, hello uh, hi this is anjane shastri uh, thank you for for uh, conducting uh, this session so my question is uh, uh, the selection of this llm uh, do we need to go for chat gpt kind or uh, how how effective are these uh, small models which uh, can fit into or which can be easily deployed on to the edge devices for example olama which is 830 uh, mb uh fight um and also uh, these prompts uh, uh, are they effective in uh, these uh, small language uh, models yes uh, i have uh, i have worked on examples in which i have seen that the prompts are effective uh, for uh, for uh, some of the publicly trained models it is not necessary that you have to uh, like fine tune uh, to 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 get the outputs but uh, but yeah self hosted models also work fine it it depends on the use case and whether it is working fine or not again it it varies across use cases and only you can tell and these metrics are like a guideline for you oh, okay okay and finally i mean these rags are in, in rag the role of uh, the llm is only to uh, structure the uh, response right uh, is there any, anything else it does because you're already uh, giving uh, the um, a grounding and then giving the text uh, and 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 then feeding it to llm for uh, generating the response so am i correct on that uh, understanding um yes the the primary purpose of implementing a rag based system is that its outputs mm. should not be more generic uh, towards the publicly trained data and we want it to be grounded on the uh input corpus of data that we have so um but then it, it cannot be like uh, i mean it depends on how you generate the prompt and what you instruct the llm to do uh it i mean i can we cannot simply dismiss this by saying it will only extract information from the chunks it can still be generative um it, it is still a generative ai it can still generate uh, Uh, like variety of input based on like it can just consider these uh, snippets as examples but it can still generate newer outputs based on uh, based on uh, what you feed also in the chain of thought prompting right you can you can instruct or train the llm to think through certain steps and and then generate a response so you can you can do some some kind of a step by step thinking and uh, and then generate uh, responses and and again tune that uh, uh, tune that step so so based on your use case you could customize it that's what i would say okay okay and and have you tried the different embeddings and uh, what is the effectiveness of uh, uh, these uh, um, embeddings that get stored into the vector database or uh, the rag database yeah we have different projects which try uh, uh, various uh, models personally i have used uh, the text gecko model that uh, google offers uh, mm -hmm. but there are uh, we have also used other open source uh, um, embedding models from langchain as well as uh, different uh, vector stores like pinecone and and stuff like that okay thank you so much yeah location yeah, oh, uh yeah let me go uh, my name is yuvraj it is regarding uh, this prompt templates sir uh, you are showing here the prompt uh, and uh, there is a llm uh, api and in between that actually there is a prompt template right it comes yes so so okay. yeah this this optimized building of prompt is based on the prompt templates okay uh, there i have one question like uh, 
because if you, as you said, uh, zero shot, few shot prompts under there are actually different types. Uh, and uh, is this a template is something to do with the type of that zero shot or few shot or it is something else? Uh, it has nothing to do with that type. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the template is, I mean, how you design the template, how, what kind of values you substitute in the template, it depends on the uh, prompting mechanism you follow. If you follow zero shot prompting, you simply give uh, the role of uh, LLM and then you ask it to perform the action or like go ahead and get, get uh, retrieve its response. But if you follow a few shot, you provide a few more examples uh, along with it. And if you if you are implementing a rag based system, you provide the context also, which is uh, which would be one part of the prompt template. So what are the elements of your prompt template? It depends on uh, some of the prompting techniques you follow as well as the the complexity of the application. Like if it's a rag, uh, then you have context in picture. Okay. Yeah. My next question is uh, regarding the vector. So the, um, like uh, nowadays this knowledge graph and other uh, vector databases, very sophisticated things are keep coming, right? And uh, do you see like, uh, because semantic search when it comes into, um, it, will it actually uh, be sufficient enough for a smaller use cases? just to go with uh, the vector databases, uh, like a LAN graph or something, instead of actually going for the LLM, will it replace some uh, at some point of time? Okay, if you do not have anything to be, uh, to be extracted or generated, or be, so basically what vector database can provide is, you, you give some input, it can provide you values in and around that input. It can provide you values that are related to that input, possibly with a ranking score. Like uh, this piece is 90% uh, relevant to the input. This this output is 80% uh, relevant to the out, output uh, input. That it, it just gives a ranking score uh, of the retrieved values. If that is sufficient for the use case, uh, might be it is enough. But, but uh, mostly LLM use cases uh, where it works is like... Uh, uh, you want to you want to get one out of those, right? Like you want to take top three contexts or top five contexts, and based on that, uh, so so there could be some errors in that also, right? For example, it could I mean the system could gauge that it is a ninety percent relevant context. Another one would be an eighty percent relevant context, and another one would be a seventy percent relevant context. But your most uh, most relevant or coherent answer might be in the seventy percent relevant uh, thing, right? Like so, you have to do some amount of trial and error. It is not a very deterministic system to say that this is how it works. But typically what I have seen is you have to choose one out of them and come up with a more cohesive response. That's where the LLM and its uh, generative nature helps. Okay. So you mean to say like uh, this temperature uh, or other parameters to be considered, right? Hyperparameters, uh, those things and uh, then a, a non-deterministic feature uh, if you want to go for all uh, Im implementing all these things, uh, then uh, it is possible only through LLM. Uh, it is not possible actually just with the vector database. So that's what yes. you're trying to say. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, actually, for this two things. Uh, one more question I have. Here, uh, this uh, in LLM cache, um, so uh, because I come from actually a regular uh, transaction processing system. Okay, this is a new thing for me. And uh, this cache processing, uh, is it something like a, a Redis kind of caching or a database or a, is it a different from that? Okay. Um, um, I haven't personally used an LLM cache, but how it works is, uh, is like uh, if you have similar questions, right? Uh, you can you can like see through this cache and, uh, and, and generate because hitting an LLM is generally costlier. And also going through all of these operations is uh, generally costlier depending upon the volume of data you have. So, so LLM cache is like, like at step step one itself or at step two itself. Uh, before you go to step two, you check the cache, and if you see if there are relevant outputs, uh, you bypass a lot of this. That's how it works. It. Sure, sure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The session is too good. Thank you. Do it at the end. Uh, thanks, Mukesh. Uh, cool. So coming back, um, thanks for all those questions. So there were a lot of thoughts about uh, uh, how, how LLM prompting and uh, rag-based applications do work. But uh, I'm going to steer you towards uh, evaluation once again. So there is, um, is context-based evaluation. There is uh, inputs fed to LLM and, and the output. We are going to focus on the output. 
<clears throat> so the solution is mostly focused around LLM based evaluation fr frameworks. <clears throat> The first of the framework that uh, th there are quite a bit of frameworks out there. So one is Ragas, another is uh, Google-based evaluation, and uh, there's also one more called Deep Eval. Uh, so uh, I'll touch upon a couple of them, Ragas to start with. So Ragas is nothing but uh, RAG assessment, so it's called Raga. And uh, what basically it does, as the name signifies, is it helps us to evaluate LLM pipelines. And the premise is that uh, you have multiple components here. So the performance of each of those components in the RAG pipeline will affect the overall output. For example, if your context retrieval, uh, let's go, let's. Sorry, let's go back. In this, if your context retrieval is no good, right? However fancy prompt you build or whatever you feed to the LLM, your output is going to be not so satisfactory. So that is what um, this uh, this premise means that each of the individual components will impact the overall experience. So some of the inputs that we have to feed this framework is uh, is about the question as well as the context. So question is the user asked question or the query, input query, and the context. So both of this will be part of the prompt, as we saw. So there's something called as the ground truth. So to introduce ground truth, is it is nothing but like a reference response, right? Like as a human, I have, um, I know that when you ask this LLM this question, right, this should be the response. So as a human, I, if I give it a reference response. It's called as the ground truth. Uh, so it's basically fed. It's, a, it's like a user input that is fed. And you have the LLM response. So how do we go about this typically is, um, let's say you have a system. You, you pick and choose 10 or 20 most important questions. Um, you feed, you have the question, then you have the ground truth uh, fed as input to the system. And when you run this Raga's evaluation, right, it goes and it, uh, it uh, on a real time, it retrieves the context and it hits the LLM. So the context is real time and the LLM response is real time, while the question and the ground truth are human fed. So to the application that you're building, you probably know what, what kind of questions the end users will ask and what are possibly the right answers, right? So we feed both the question and the ground truth and then the real time contexts are generated and the real-time LLM response is also generated. And based on that, uh, Ragas provides a score. So the Ragas score, again, are of, uh, uh, there, are, there are multiple scores now they have come up with. Uh, typically, they are, uh, they are classified into two broad categories. One is on the retrieval, like how good is your retrieval? Uh, some of the metrics uh, they call for uh, retrieval is uh, context precision like how accurate is your context that is being retrieved and context recall. Context recall is uh, how much this, uh, this context is relevant to the uh, answer that is, uh, that, is, that is going to be generated. So these are context precision and context rec recall are mostly re related to the retrieval of information from the vector databases. So there are again another category of uh, metrics for the generation. Basically the LLM is generating some outputs for us. So one of that is uh, faithfulness. So faithfulness is um, defined as factual consistency or factual accuracy of the response. But uh, how I would like to put it is, uh, it's very simple, right? Like, is the system hallucinating, right? Like, is the LLM hallucinating or not? So if the faithfulness score is high, it means that it is not hallucinating. It is basing its response out of some real inputs that we are giving it. Likewise, answer relevancy. However faithful it might sound, is it really relevant to the input question that you are asking? So that is the answer uh, relevancy aspect of it. Again, there are a whole lot of metrics. Uh, I have I've just picked uh, a few metrics like uh, context precision. So I have, I have also explained about a few inputs, right? Like the question, the context, the ground truth, and the LLM response of which uh, the context precision, in order to evaluate this metric of context precision, we use the question, the ground truth, as well as the retrieved context. So what, what this uh, precision means is that whether the elements in the, in the ground truth are also present in the context, right? 
like you feed the ground truth and you tell that this ground truth is your uh, is your reference is your golden reference right so then the context that are retrieved does it have elements which match with the ground truth unless otherwise it matches obviously your output will not be any any accurate right so so this context precision is a way to measure the first step there and uh, the values or the outputs range between 0 to 1 it's a it's a floating number and uh, and the higher the better it means like if you get a context precision of 1.0 or uh, 0 0.9 or 0 0.8 it means that the score is high i mean uh, it means that the precision is high and uh, it is working more as expected Likewise, there are parameters like answer relevancy, which means uh, which which works out of question context as well as the answer, and it says that uh, how much is the answer relevant to the input prompt? You gave it a prompt; it is generating an answer. Are they both relevant to each other? So th it is a measure of it, and uh, faithfulness. Uh, yeah, it is a, it is like a, a measure of uh, how how correct or the generated answer and the context, right? Like how how they are factually accurate. Can you really relate facts to it? Is it picking up facts from there or is it like uh, cooking up facts, right? So if it is less, then it means that uh, it is somewhat hallucinating. It's not really picking the facts out of the data that you fed in as context. Uh, likewise, answer correctness is, uh, is like an exact match as the name suggests. So you have the reference answer, you have the actual LLM generated answer, how, how, how accurate these are or how exactly matched these are. So all of these values are uh, like zero to one and higher the better. So let's take an example of this faithfulness score. So there is a formula to this and the website has a, has a range of formulas for all the questions, uh, sorry, for all the metrics uh, that, that they have here. So for faithfulness, it is um, the claims in the generated answer that can be extracted from the context by the total number of claims in the answer. So this is the formula they use to compute this. And uh, so there are Python libraries uh, that can be used to install this uh, uh, Raga's uh, package. And then you can, like this, this is how the code looks like. So some of the inputs that I told you, right, like the question, the answer, the context, this can be fed in like this. And uh, and one one uh, one aspect to note is that this works uh, better when there are like a like a whole range of uh, uh, questions and answers, right? We generally do not run metrics for like one question, one answer. Like we have we bunch up ten questions and we generate so that um, it is like an averaging uh, philosophy that uh, you have uh, even I mean across questions it might uh, whether it fares good or bad, right? That's that's the way we gauge it. We typically do not like provide just a single input. So I can show you the output of uh, how this typically looks like. Uh, so this is one of my uh, internal projects that I'm working on. So so in this, uh, this dashboard might sound a little bit confusing, but uh, I have uh, hope it is visible. I have I have like a range of parameters that I'm measuring uh, for uh, for an input. So query one, query two are like uh, sets of inputs across which I'm measuring the output. So let's take a closer look at one of this. Um, uh, you can you can have this uh, question that uh, that somebody had asked, uh, and the context that was retrieved. So we retrieve a whole lot of context uh, based on our. Uh, our use case, uh, and then you can see that uh, there is an answer from the LLM also. I mean, I could have logged the ground truth also here. I I had missed to do that, but yeah, this is uh, these are like some of the variables, like what question you ask, what are the contexts that uh, that got retrieved from the vector DB, and what is the answer, and then you have uh, these parameters being measured out of it. So. Claims, yes. So, um, so they say that uh, I'm. They want to 
they are asking the re reason that they have finished a program but still they are getting a reminders that the program is not finished and so they are uh, here in the in the context so i because i built this application i know that the answer is a copy of one of the context or basically it's an extraction uh, based application so i can look at the answer to tell you what are the claims are uh, this this would be present in a context too that's what i mean so here they say that uh, there are a, there are a couple of uh, reasons why this might happen and uh, this is present in the context and it is present in the answer also so faithfulness is to tell that what what um, in the answer like add all the claims in the answer versus the claims that can be inferred from the context in this case uh, the answer is a subset of the context like a part of the context i am pulling it as the answer so that's why uh, you have faithfulness is one or two like all of it is present all the claims that are uh, uh, that are made in the generated answer are factually based out of the input context because i am extracting it in this use case i am extracting it hmm yeah the score will be less yes so in some cases you can see that the score is less So, uh, so that was just uh, one example of uh, of how to do it. So, what happens under the hood is uh, Ragas basically uses one more LLM. You can choose what LLM that it is. Um, typically, uh, it uses an OpenAI key. it asks you to feed an open ai key to do these uh, evaluations or um, so how it uh, how it works uh, in general in the industry what people follow is um, you you run the base basically uh, you run the rag or you run the prompt based application using model 1 you use some other model let's say model 2 to evaluate uh, this so another model is used to evaluate uh, a given model's performance so it basically uses like how it generates these numbers etc it again uses an llm behind the scenes uh, but what are the limitations uh, that uh, i had come across when when i was working with it so these limitations are purely based out of my experiences uh, that i i feel that uh, in ragas there are metrics which uh, sound very much overlapping uh, so so for example the ground truths and the context uh, and the generated answers there are more than one metrics which works on uh, a combination of these parameters so i find that the scores are a little bit hard to interpret um, like the the formulas are also like very statistical and it is uh, it is not very uh, i don't know i find it a little bit hard to interpret that right and let's say the score is 0.67 right uh, with faithfulness i have picked up a simple example it is easy to it is easy to explain what it is but if you look at uh, something like this right it is uh, answer relevance and it is hard to explain why why some value is like 0.3 or 0.8 what will happen how can i improve this etc apart from going by this uh, generic definition of these are the parameters it works on and i have to build my own interpretations or explanations as to uh, why it works so this is my personal experience what i have felt right uh, so this is pretty much what i have uh, on working with ragas i'm going to move on to the next framework if there are any specific questions i can handle on ragas or any other Yes. Hey, one question. It's regarding. Uh, just uh, one moment. Just one moment. There's a question here. Physically, the person is going on, so I'll I'll take this a little later. Go ahead. Right. So the question is, uh, if the uh, if the values are like greater than point five and and so on, we know that it is working well. But if it is like point three or point four, which is suboptimal. uh then how do we know what to work with so 
uh, one is uh, if you are mathematically strong you can go through the formula and you can uh, you can like do it for example you can manually go and pick and choose how many claims there are or what are the what are the facts here and why it is not matching etc or otherwise you can uh, i i typically go by these values like if you if you take uh, answer correctness it is only based on ground truth and generated answer so either my ground truth is wrong because ground truth is something that i as a human just feed it but when you go through the system maybe there is no document or data related to registration process but i am saying you have to give answers related to registration process which will never happen because the original system is grounded on the context and it is grounded on what the llm is designed as prompts and so on right so i have to either look at uh, the ground truth or the generated answer when when the answer correctness is not right it it could it could turn out like only a developer can tell uh, of that system can tell that ground truth is correct but still the generated answer is wrong then it means like i have to look at the prompt effectiveness of the prompt and i can also look at the context so that's why uh, this kind of uh, dashboard helps this kind of a dashboard helps where i am showing that uh these are the contexts that are being retrieved so i mean it is possible to log every value as you run but then uh, what we do is we we make it like a nightly run and uh, on a, almost on a daily basis in llm based applications people keep changing the prompts they keep changing some words of the prompts they keep changing the examples and when they ingest more and more input documents right the context also changes so over a period if you can look at the scores and say that in this week something is drastically wrong and things are not working fine you know that the prompts are you can go and check whether somebody has made changes to the prompts or the source data is like not relevant uh, it could be that uh, the way you have designed the prompts the context snippets are not at all matching and uh, of course you won't get the output right so those are some cues about how you can like go debugging this no it does not offer any explanation it only offers the scores the final output is only the scores and uh, when you are so so langfuse um, i take a moment to introduce this uh, this is uh, a tool in which you can like uh, post traces you know we have log traces right like we post log traces like this uh, we can post uh, these uh, scores once these scores are computed i stitch together what was the context what was the user input and what was the llm answer and then i post that these are the uh, scores that got generated for this particular input and output and and based on that i have got these scores so this is something that uh, we log on a uh, on whatever daily basis or nightly basis or whatever right we we'll log it so that we can we can make sense of this data but uh, again so so as I, as i pointed out uh, what i feel is a limitation is that it is left to developer interpretation on to why this uh, value is high low um, even mediocre so yeah somebody had a question uh, online yeah it's uh, regarding um like well, the same thing like you showed the lang views right uh, so like a Pr prometheus grafana so monitoring tools and the, okay we have and this is actually just on top of the wrapper kind of stuff and uh, so that we have access to this lang views lang views is uh, yeah it is comparable to uh, uh, other uh, monitoring dashboards but uh, but this is something which is uh, more specifically specific Uh, specific to llm based uh, monitoring right uh, so you just don't i mean you can you can post traces out of your application like uh, like uh, logs out of your application based on this uh, how how the llm runs you can also manage prompts here for example there could be multiple versions i told you right in an llm application uh, people keep changing prompts day in and out in a day five times the prompts get changed so which version of the prompt is generating this kind of a score 
that, so prompts could be managed here and you can mark one or one of them as latest which can be picked up by the application so you need not like maintain it's like configuration management along with monitoring and observability for llm applications so these these prompts could be uh, managed here and the application could be designed that it pulls these prompts it generates the outputs and and the scores gets posted again here so that means the uh, prompts data sets uh, uh, models all this actually support the versioning right yes okay uh, so here uh, what, what is this sessions and generations uh, meant for these two types uh, okay, so every time you generate these traces, right, you have a session ID for, this is like a unique ID for each of that. So you can go by those sessions. For each user prompt request, right? I mean, prompt ID. Right, for each run. For each for run. Each Sorry. For each run, you have an input, you have a context, you have an output, right? Like that makes one run. Likewise, you have a different question for which another relevant set of contexts are retrieved, et cetera. So that is, that is another run. So you can see, right, like query one, query two, these are all different inputs and they have different uh, outputs also. Like, yeah, to the LLM, you will ask a variety of questions to understand whether it is, uh, whether it is like uh, working as, as you expect, right? Like, like in a domain, you will have a range of questions. Yeah, got it. Yeah, for each run, I Actually, it is a session unique. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Cool. So let's uh, move on. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, so uh, before, uh, while you were describing the uh, Raga's framework, so you explained that saying uh, similar to uh, in giving input to one LLM frame, uh, LLM uh, model, you have to, uh, in order to leverage the Raga's framework, you need to consume another LLM model, which means it's like uh, evaluating one LLM framework through our I mean, LLM model with another model, am I right? True. Okay. So you could, use, case... the same, you could use the same model also. Uh, okay. It is left to us, uh, but then... Uh... Uh, if we use the same model, uh, does it sound like I myself asking a question, I myself answering the question, and I'm saying that it's correct. I'm, I'm just putting it in very simple terms. I'm just trying to understand. No, these are, uh, so you know that uh, LLM has something called uh, context or yeah. uh, or some, some sort of a history with which it operates. So these would be different instances that you are instantiating. For example, yeah. if he is using Vertex AI and I am using Vertex AI, our answers don't get interchanged, right? They have different instances that are running. Likewise, this would be a different instance. Uh, okay. Just that, I, uh, okay, so, so, uh, so what I thought is like, um, as you said, this is, these are two different instances. Um, but I, I assumed, or maybe I'm, I'm, I'm maybe incorrect. I just want to understand. So I assume that when you said it's a different model, uh, I predicted, or I guessed that okay, uh, my input is being fed into an open AI, and the Raga's framework can be built on another LLM model, which can be Vertex or a Perplexity yes. or Cloud. Am I right? Yes, typically that's what people do. They. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, that's got like it. the. Okay, I got it. Yeah, so the terminology is uh, student, uh, teacher, uh, you know, sort of trading. So you have to pick a, a model that is actually uh, superior than what you are going to actually use. Uh, let's say 405B, right? It's above nearly, uh, you know, expensive to uh, run uh, Metalama 405B, but that can be a you know, teacher model. So you can just have it to, you know, verify, uh, you know, the truthfulness of your model. And then uh, let's, in terms of comparison, right? Uh, you can run, uh, say, a Metalama 7B, 8B on a C4 system, whereas to run a 8B model, you need a A100. And then to run, uh, say, 403B, right? So you need H100. So in terms of cost price, it's going to be 100x, or not even 100x, uh, 100,000 x when it comes to the base model and then superior model. So you should get to choose a teacher model as a superior model. It's not going to, you're not going to eat all the time, right? So you're just going to test your model. Once done, you know, it's up to, uh, you know, the actual model that you're building. That's why it's called a, a student-teacher uh, validation. Sure. Thanks, Lokesh. So uh, I guess uh, that, that, that kind of uh, uh, pattern is, uh, is valid. 
uh, at the same time uh, for simpler use cases uh, we just uh, keep to the simple standard that we use some other llm rather than the same llm but i have used uh, same llm also because of uh, like api key limitations and uh, and stuff like that it, it still works just that it uh, i mean how how it comes up with these cores is again it relies on something on a language model based evaluation that's what i meant to say uh, here i have one question uh, like the student teacher analogy uh, okay which is mentioned right uh, like i am looking from context of training and inferencing okay that is actually two things we are doing and uh, uh, so when we are consuming actually we need to uh, the uh, particular configuration we need to have okay for the better performance but this analogy actually uh, is mentioned basically student teacher is for a uh, like a two different uh, roles, right? Uh, uh, actually two different roles where actually uh, which uh, model, powerful model or actually a less uh, powerful model actually we can choose depending on the uh, load, okay? Which you, you, one is going to get based on that actually or it is categorized, right? Or it is actually categorized based on the training and the inferencing perspective uh, that I could not get it. Could you please explain? It's purely uh, from inferencing uh, perspective. So to answer your question. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, so the way it uh, works, right? So you need someone who mastered a uh, concept, right? So that's what uh, ChatGPT4 is. It's rumored to be, you know, 160 billion parameters. So you just choose your teacher to be a, you know, 160 billion uh, model. And then you test whatever you model. It could be even a model that you custom train. So you can validate, you know, your answers with, you know, what we believe the teacher's answer to be correct. It need not be correct. So even, uh, let's say, 160B uh, is equivalent of, you know, the chat GPT-4. And then you have 405B from, uh, see, Metalama, uh, you know, the recent version that we have. So you can build a smaller model, whatever fits you. You can even run it on your mobile phone. And you can pick that base model. And your job is to now, you know, validate whether the answers are correct. So you just go to a proctor, right? So... Okay, I wrote my exams and I just need to validate. You reach out to your you know, uh, teacher or you know, whoever out there, right? And validate your scores. The teacher can still be wrong, but at least you know the score. Okay, out of you know 10 questions, you know that I answered uh, 8 or 7. So that's pretty much you know what uh, uh, the validation that we are up to. So that's why you know it's a uh, uh, student-teacher uh, validation. Usually it has to be one level higher. So obvious, right? So you don't choose to give it to, uh, for example, a 10th grader examiner. Right, so you write a uh, tenth uh, grade question paper. You wouldn't expect a ninth grader to, you know, answer, uh, you know, verify your answers. It's as simple as that. Okay, got got it. Thank you. Uh, one more question on the other one, like uh, when actually there are multiple models, uh, uh, like uh, in LLMs, um, uh, like actually like piping kind of stuff, right? Uh, if uh, the a multi-agent system, like uh, one output of actually one, okay, the agent, okay, which is using basically one LLM or uh, like a database agent or some agent, right, it could be. And the output of that actually has to be passed to the, uh, as an input to the next uh, thing. Like it is like a pipe kind of actually thing, right, which you have uh, older base. And here, uh, do we need to uh, go via always through the prompting? or any actually other way channel actually because it is between the llms it, there is no going to be that's not going to be any user inter, uh, interference there right so as actually it's not going to be interactive from the user okay do we have some other channels actually from llm to llm communication between the in the multi agent architecture okay to make it more efficient something available yeah i have selva who has implemented a multi agent system so maybe a more appropriate answer yeah, and in multi-agent, uh, again, uh, the idea of multi-agent is like, you know, you can focus on building one agent at a time and you can apply the same testing as well, again, one agent at a time, right? Because like when you have one agent, it, it is focusing on one particular task. You, you know, it's 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 like maybe crude analogy, don't take it uh, for granted, but it's like, you know, microservices where you test one service at a time and they still do like an end-to-end -end test which is also you can do, but for like certain uh, smaller set of use cases, right? So it's it just a matter of just composing the test suite as well or layering your test suite as well, similar to the microservices world with multi-agent. 
Okay, okay. Yeah, like my question almost like that. I mean, it be, I didn't put it uh, right way. Uh, the thing is, uh, for example, if actually something is already authenticated, okay, in a given system, and there are actually multiple microservices, as you said, uh, multiple microservices are uh, hosted. And between the microservice communication, as already authentication happened, okay, uh, an API call, okay, from one microservice to the other microservice, taking output of one and passing it as input to the other one. There is no need for uh, uh, having a separate uh, API uh, authentication needs to be done. Okay, well, uh, so that that is where I am coming from because it's similar to microservice, uh, multiple microservice. If we consider equivalent to this agent, multi-agent system, then one agent to other agent communication need not have to go via this prompting mechanism. Some other way actually it should have been right. That's why I thought like some APIs also I heard APIs are available in LLM that directly we can call or function calling. I'm not sure about that. Okay, yeah. Uh, if you are, if you have actually something you can share. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, diverging from the topic, but but maybe I'll quickly address, right? Yeah, I think these are different techniques altogether. Like, you know, function calling using tools and multi-agent systems are very different techniques. In multi-agent system, the medium of, or, or the communication mechanism is still going to be the text prompts, right? One agent spits out something, and then that goes as a prompt to the other one. But of course, it's intentionally designed that way because you know we are finding with LLM apps like it's very easy to interact with in the form of free text, right? But of course, if if there is a, a determined a deterministic or or not like there's a functional component which is available as an API, that's where like you, know, you use these techniques like function calling or tools to invoke that API, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, with multi-agent system, idea is like you, know, you decompose your these kind of tasks into smaller uh, agents, which again internally also can use like retrieval techniques or tooling uh, tools or function calling techniques. But you let uh, like a higher order agent to orchestrate this individual agents, and in this mechanism between the individual agents, the communication is through text prompts only. Oh, okay, that answers my question. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll keep to it. I'll move on. Uh, so on the Google evaluation, it's um, yet another framework. Um, but uh, let's see let's see what this offers. So this is Google's way of evaluating generating generative AI models. So here it is more specific to uh, uh, some of the use cases that you have. For example, if it is a text generation, there are specific metrics for summarization. And for question answering, for each of these uh, use cases, there are specific uh, metrics here. And it provides an observability into the model's performance. Uh, again, uh, the, the inputs are of uh, uh, fourfold, similar to that, but just the names are different. For example, instruction is like the prompt or the user query and context uh, that makes a prompt. And uh, reference is like the ground truth, what we call as ground truth. And, it, and there is a response, which is nothing but the LLM response. Uh, but one one shift here is that they follow two types of paradigms here. One is called point-wise, in which you evaluate a model in its isolation. Uh, so you just evaluate one model. But there's something also called as pairwise metrics, where they compare two models. Like if you are yet to go to production, and if you are choosing, many people asked what works, what doesn't work, right? Like you can compare their two models to uh, to figure out which performs better. So I have worked uh, largely on the point-wise metrics, so I'll go through some of them. For summarization, there is a host of metrics like summarization quality, summarization helpfulness, and verbosity. Um, again, these are like values that range uh, uh, to, to tell us uh, how, how the summarization output works. Likewise, for question answering, there's, there's question answering quality, helpfulness, correctness, and relevance. For text generation, again, there's um, there's something called exact match, fulfillment, coherence, groundness, and BLU. So BLU is uh, is a, is a, is what it means is a bilingual evaluation under study. So what it means is uh, the output is compared to a human uh, reference. 
so the ground truth that we give is called the human reference gear and the more the machine's output is closer to human's output it is better so that's what we uh, we had like similar parameters in ragas also but then um, um, there's uh, they are called by different names and uh, a bit of evaluation differs here so i'll just focus on these four parameters so on exact match exact match just says that uh, the llm response is there then the ground truth or the reference that we have provided is there are they exactly matching word by word that's that's the thing so in in when we are doing extractive based use cases uh, this parameter really helps so it just has two values zero is not matched and one is matched um, moving on to the next metric which is called fulfillment it it assesses the model's ability to fulfill your instructions so basically prompts are the instructions and how much the model is able to follow the prompts so it just uses the instruction and it it uses the llm response and based on that it gauges uh, how how it's able to follow it or not so now here the values are a little bit different it is 1 to 5 and 5 means the better higher the better likewise there's something called coherence so it gauges the model's ability to perform or output a, a coherent response like for example in the output that it produces right is it a logical flow is it more coherent uh, is it organized right like from, from if there are like a, a paragraph or two paragraphs as output are they all stitched together do they, do they make sense in a in a relevant way or a cohesive way so that is coherence uh, it just uses the llm response and it it evaluates this coherence parameter it ranges from 1 to 5 likewise there's some something called as a groundedness so groundedness is uh, uh something related to the hallucination aspect like how grounded or how factually correct it is so you have the context you have the llm response is a response based on the context or is it like simply trying to put something out there so there are only two values ungrounded and grounded right um, so i will just show an example of uh, this also so uh, basically at this point we are evaluating uh, between these two frameworks so i am just running some tests to understand uh whether these are like working fine but uh, the best part of this is um, is that so i will choose one of this so i have opened it here is readable so the thing is uh, for for the scores that i have here right like uh, i have bleu i have exact match coherence and fulfillment so now it it provides a reasoning for the fulfillment like let's say the fulfillment is 2.0 which is not so fulfilling right like 5 is the best score so 2 is like below below the average uh, so it says that uh, the response fails to understand the user's problem and provides instructions on how to renew the uh, some program so this indicates that the response has not correctly interpreted the user's request so it tells that for the question the answer is a little bit uh, not uh, not correct so so it doesn't match it it has misunderstood the question and provided some answer that's what it is trying to say and also it says that um, requirements adherence the response does not adhere to the user's request to resolve the issue of still receiving reminders after completing the program so it focuses on something else called renewal which is not what the user is asked for so so again uh, here um, the the for the application that we are building right actually if you are getting repeated reminders it means that uh, you have somehow missed out on the renewal that is that is actually the correct uh, resolution but when you give it like a specific context to the llm it is not able to understand right so it so that's why you cannot use any random parameter as evaluation based on your use case for example for me text extraction is the use case so then i should just stick to the bleu parameter which which gives me a gauge of how good the text extraction is if i focus on fulfillment and if my uh, my contexts are designed in that way and that's how my end user wants it but uh, when you just take that one particular answer and feed it to the llm and say uh, can you tell me how fulfilling it is it says it is not fulfilling because for it it is maybe it is not coherent it is not um, yeah the similar response comes out for the coherence uh, aspect also so uh, what i mean to uh, drive uh, as a fact here is that you need to choose these parameters based on the type of use cases that you have if it is an extraction use case you could probably stick to bleu or uh, exact match 
and if it is um, if it is like a different uh, use case like for example if you're if you're expecting more reasonable answers from the llm not following not very much grounded to the context but then using the context as a guideline and coming up with uh, with creative answers then probably fulfillment and coherence are some parameters that you can look at so uh, the best part of this uh, in a comparative fashion is that uh, it at least i have uh, a, an explanation to say why the score is low or suboptimal uh, to the question that uh, he had asked right like uh, if you use this framework there is there's some guideline towards it so uh, that is pretty much what i have i have also shown the demo so now it is open to questions questions any more questions Cool. Sounds good. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, so sorry. Excellent session. Thank you. Uh, Ragas is uh, uh, so the question is uh, is Raga specific to rag based evaluation? Ragas is more specifically designed to rag based uh, pipeline uh, evaluation. Uh, you can probably apply it to other uh, other systems also, but again, you have to be careful in choosing the parameters. Um, and uh, and uh, I think uh, it would be best, uh, or it would be more optimal for evaluating RAG pipelines. That's that's that was their premise in designing that framework. Vector store. Yeah, there are there are two parameters uh, to it. So in in Ragas, they have classified. Uh, there are there are certain metrics uh, that start with the word context, which are most specifically to the context that are retrieved from the vector vector store. So they are they are pertaining to the vectorizing aspect of it. And uh, there are there are a few metrics that that are under the generation category. So like faithfulness and uh, answer correctness and stuff like that, which are more relevant to the final response. So final response is a function of the context, right? Like. Context is still fed to, but then we we assess or evaluate context separately and context plus output also separately. So so based on this combination, you can like figure it out. Is these combinations right like what this parameter uses what aspects of the input question ground truth context so when it is revolving around context it uh, it is also about uh, the vectorization yes uh Serena, uh how is, uh, I'm new to this prompt. Uh, okay, when, uh, when uh, saying Anjaneya, that uh, a user. Uh, sorry, oh, sorry, may I just request you to uh, hold on for a minute? Uh, there's somebody asking question in, yes, in here, so we'll sure. finish that and come to you. Okay, so in this case, if answer correctness score is low, then our focus will be on uh, the LLM instead of uh, vectorized uh, part of that. That's true. Thing. Yeah. So you have to also, there's a caveat that your ground truth, you might have fed it wrongly. You have to just make sure of it. But other than that, if you're, if you're sure of the ground truth, then it is about the LLM generated answer. Okay. Thank you. And thanks for uh, focusing on this topic because when there is implementation in the application, even application development, we focus on implementation, we forget the testing part, unit test coverage. But this is like unit test coverage to the implementation we have. Okay. I would just like to clarify that it, there is no, I mean, you can write code and you can write unit test, but you cannot write unit test to the LLM output because it is non-deterministic. I mean, you Every time you ask a question, 
it will give a different flavor. It might mean the same, but it will give a different flavor. So uh, that's where these metrics come in, but it is not, uh, I mean, it, it is not factually comparable to unit testing. Okay, maybe the unit test might be the wrong one, the testing Yes, area. the testing and uh, the evaluation. Mm, evaluating. The evaluation, the whether is it performing correctness. good or not, that, that kind of an aspect. Thank you so much. Cool, thanks. Uh, yeah. Anjaneya, I think you had a question, right? Yes, sir. So this, I'm new to this uh, prompt uh, uh, engineering or whatever the prompt concept itself. So, so the user's input can vary uh, dynamically, and how this uh, uh, automatically or the dynamically the prompt is being generated. Uh, sorry, could you please come again? Uh, I'm I'm confused on the prompt generation. You you mentioned that that a single shot, uh, uh, multi shot prompts are being generated by some logic, right? So what exactly how, how these uh, uh, prompts are generated? Can you the tell me one like, example? Yeah. Prompt is mostly like the logic uh, that we use to uh, generate the. Uh, I mean. Uh, the, the it's, it's, it's comparable to the logic in the code, right? Like uh, we, we can either follow a templatized method in which you can substitute the user question and uh, you can substitute the context that we had uh, retrieved and then you can just feed that to the LLM. This is like the simplest form of prompting. But if you want to add more examples, you can say uh, here are a few examples that you can uh, follow and then you can give user question and uh, LLM response, expected LLM response like that you can give. So there are uh, there are a few uh, websites out there. In Google also there's something called uh, prompt templates uh, or prompt gallery in which you can go and look at it. Uh, so there are, there are multiple topics uh, out there. Thank you, thank you. I guess we are done then. Thank you for your time. I appreciate taking time and uh, listening to this talk. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for arranging this. Thank you. Thank you, Sarinya, for a good session. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us and attending this session. Uh, if you have any feedbacks, either for this session or uh, Geek Night in general, please uh, uh, share with us, either in uh, the Meetup website or uh, the link we have shared in the Zoom chat. Um, thank you once again for um, joining us here. Thank you very much. Have, uh, uh, some snacks in the pantry. Feel free to make use of it. Thank you. Thank you.